Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo for rubyguides.com and in this video you are going to learn some basic but very helpful Linux commands for Ruby developers. So Linux commands for Ruby developers. Okay, so this is going to be a very helpful video for you if you are getting started working with Linux or with the command line, the terminal in general, and just you want to learn a few useful commands that you can use to move around, right? Because unlike using like your regular uh, windows where you can click around, and your graphical interfaces, you click on the icons and everything. Well, you don't have any of that when you're working with the command line. The only thing you have is commands and text, right? So the first thing uh, you need to learn is a very basic command that's called change directory. Change directory which is use CD in Linux and also Mac. And even on Windows, you have this CD command, right? What you can do is CD is change to another directory, right? So I have a directory named examples here. I'm going to change into it. So the way this works is that we are on a current directory and from that directory we move into other directories. And the way that we move from directory to directory is to use the change directory command or cd. Okay? And you can move directly into one directory or you can go into other directories by specifying the full path, right? So I could go into my Ruby's directory, which is where I have the different versions of Ruby installed, like this, right? So the difference is that it starts with the slash. So just like a URL, it can be absolute or relative. Relative means that we're working from the current directory and absolute means we are working from the root of all of the directories, right? Which is use the slash. So that's one thing. And another thing that a lot of people don't know about, even people that have been working with the command line for a while, is the cd slash or minus whatever you prefer command what does this do well this basically switches you between the last directory you were in and the current directory so you can keep using it as you can see this puts me back into the examples directory from my home directory so this tilde character means home directory or home folder. So folder and directory are interchangeable terms, okay? So that's cd as, um, dash or minus. And it's not the same as doing this. Yes, uh, dot dot means going to the last one, last directory, but not the last directory you were in, but the last directory up the directory hier hierarchy because directories are built into a hierarchy, right? So this goes one step up the hierarchy, but CD minus moves you between two directories. They were the one you were before and the one you are now. So just that's change directory. That's how you move between directories in Linux, 
or Mac. So don't worry, I have more commands for you and I'm going to show you how this relates to Ruby as well. So why is it important for you to learn these commands? Because as a Ruby developer, you're going to be using the command line a lot, right? If you want to run some Ruby code, to use something like IRB, or you use something like Pry, or the Ruby interpreter, you do Ruby and the name of your file that you want to run, right? And you also need this if you want to create a new Rails application, you say Rails new and the name of the application, right? Or if you want to start the Rails server, you have to Rails server, etc., etc. All of these things happen on the command line, right? So it's very important that you understand and get familiar with the command line and all of these commands. Okay, so having said that, let's look at another command. And this command is ls. So ls stands for list, and this will list all of the files and directories from the current um, directory, right? And ls has more options than this because we can do ls minus or dash lh and this means long and humanize so this is the long format and you can see there is a lot of information in here that's important right so first we still have the file name and then we have the last time that this file was change or modified, right? Then we have the file size in bytes, or if the file is bigger than a specific amount of bytes, and you're using this flag, the H flag, then this will show us kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, etc. right? Then in here we have the user and group that owns these files. So the first column is the user, the second is the group, okay? And in this case, yes, the group and the user is the same. That's okay. In fact, that's the default in many Linux versions. Now, this bit right here is also important because this shows you the permissions or in other words, what can you do with this file? What are you allowed to do with this file, right? So the R stands for read, the W stands for write, and the what's missing here is the X, which stands for executable. X is executable, okay? And then we have three groups. First, the owner. The second is the group. And the last is others. So that means not the owner and not part of the group. Okay? So that's how that works. As you can see, that's a lot of information that can, can be helpful when working with files and folder from the command line. Another command that I find very helpful is called PWD. So this stands for print working directory. Print working directory, right? And it does exactly that. It prints the, pre the current working directory, which in this case is my home folder, home Jesus, and then the current directory examples. And this can be helpful so you know exactly where you are. And so you can 
called scripts or programs that are on this path, right? So I have a Ruby uh, script here and we can call it from anywhere by having the full path, the absolute path, right? And the way you get the absolute path is the working directory, which is this, plus the name of the file. And by the way, you can also get this from Ruby, right? So you can do ruby-e, and then you can print dir pwd, which is the same thing as there. And of course, we get the same output, the same result, right? So that's one way you can get this value from inside Ruby if you need to. And you can also do other things, other links commands from Ruby, right? So for that, look into the file utils module and the dir class, also the file class. Another helpful command is the which command, the which command. So I can do which Ruby. Uh, what that tells me is where the Ruby binary is, the Ruby interpreter, right? So when I do Ruby something, what's really running is this, right? So this can be helpful to make sure that you're running the correct version of Ruby that you're expecting, and also to know, to find out where Ruby is installed. And of course, this uh, universal command, it works for other things. So you can do which rake, or which uh, chromium, or which, which, but which, which, of course, since it's not a binary, is a built-in command, you don't get a path, right? But I think it's interesting that you can do that. So that's which, remember it's helpful when you want to find out where the command, the binary, the program is actually found in the file system. And finally, I have one more command for you, and th that's echo gem home. Echo gem home. Let's see what is this. Okay, so we get a path again, but what is this about? Well, this path is where Ruby will look for gems, okay? So when I include a gem in a Ruby program, Ruby will look for that gem inside uh, this directory, right? So if you're having any problems with gems or not being able to install gems or, or require gems, maybe look into this folder and see if the gems are actually there or if there, are, there is some kind of problem with this path, okay? And the way you find that is using this command, echo gem home, okay? And there is another command that's related to that and that's gem emv, gem emv, which stands for environment. So the output looks like this. Of course, this is a Ruby specific command. It is not Linux specific like the other commands, I'll show you. And this also gives you the same information and even more information, as you can see. So uh, this is also very helpful for debugging, troubleshooting, troubleshooting, fixing problems, things like that. Okay, so that's gem emv. So that's the last command I have for you today. 
I hope you found this helpful and interesting. Please click the like button for me so I know that you like this video. And if you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And visit my website, rubyguides.com. rubyguides.com. In there you will find many, many Ruby tutorials to help you improve your Ruby skills. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.